Thank you, Laura. So my name is Lindsay Reich. Um, I'm actually from Scotland and I've been in Doha nearly three years now. Becoming a veteran. Yeah, <laughs> should be. <laughs> but no, what I um, actually do for a living is I'm predominantly a personal trainer, but I also am a yoga instructor, which became, it was a hobby of mine for a long time, yoga. But yeah, it's now become my uh, bread and butter. And I can testify because I've, I've ended up meeting Lindsay through <laughs> yoga and she's a kind of wellness guru, basically. And that's what you're going to be doing for us here at um, Rise in the Morning Show. Yeah, well, I have been helping you get into some back bends and <laughs> making you more flexible. You're improving <laughs> greatly. Slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah. But no, I am uh, I'm now uh, very happy to be here to help uh, with health and wellness will be my um, contribution weekly on your show. So, I mean, we talk in health and wellness, what what's kind of included in that? Um because it's such a broad spectrum, I guess. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, you know, when you say health and wellness, people have different ideas what that means. So I think what will be nice is on the show, it's weekly. So we'll probably do one week diet, uh, one week exercise and fitness can be anything from tips to uh, solutions. Um, We'll also discuss uh, health. So that could be, you know, anything from illnesses or vitamins, anything like that, Mm. right through to, um, I want to talk quite a lot about stress relief, You know, we all live in quite a busy time. So Mm -hmm. health and wellness covers a broad spectrum of things. Um, And, you know, I'm always happy to have any feedback from any listeners. If there's a subject or a topic that they would like me to discuss, then I can certainly help. Absolutely. Yeah, if you're listening now and you think I want to get involved or have a comment or a question, then 92126 is a text service. So 92126, you can text us. And of course, we're on Facebook and we're on Twitter. So tweet us at QF Radio 2 and get any questions or any comments in because I'm sure as, as we get into the diet territory everyone's oh, going to yeah. be uh, got a lot of opinions it's, going on it's you know it's a drop <laughs> in the ocean there's so much you can talk about even just on one subject of a particular diet mm. never mind diet on a on a whole scale there's a lot you can talk about so it's endless well over hopefully the next month we'll have everyone feeling kind of at one with themselves in, <laughs> in their health and their being uh, so well tell us what we're going to look at today then so what's going to be our kind of starting topic well i figured you know diet is a very popular subject that people always ask me about and um, it's always in great debate but because this is a breakfast show and this is my first uh, contribution i thought it'd be rather fitting to discuss breakfast everyone's favorite meal it should be it's my favorite (laughs) meal i'd rather have breakfast than dinner sometimes yeah (laughs) no but i did think you know we'll discuss um breakfast um mostly because you know it's it's quite concerning that actually one in five adults skip this and it poses the question why you know why as an adult when you're really busy are you skipping breakfast you know as a child you were taught well i was to have breakfast you wake up and you would eat probably a sugary cereal, Mm. not so good. Um, And it would set you off for the day, a busy day at school. (laughs) But it it gave you a routine and it gave you, you know, that standard of sort of three meals a day. And then, you know, what happened? You... It's true, because as a kid, you, you know, you did always have breakfast. And mm. it's the way that even brands market the cereal. Yeah, They'll say, yeah. you know, it's so important. Studies say concentration yeah. is better and all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden you become an adult and it just you just feel it like just it doesn't count to you anymore. The statistics don't matter. You're yeah, not a child. That's right. And it's <laughs> like, exactly. I don't know about you, but when I was a child, well, because I'm Scottish, I was sort of force fed porridge. Mm. Um, I'll get to that because porridge is a wonderful meal to have in, in your day. But you know, kids were also and still are targeted towards the free toy that used mm. to be in cereal. I don't know mm. if it still is. And I used to sometimes, please, can I have these Lucky Charms or yeah. something because it had a toy and then I wouldn't even eat that cereal. Yeah. But, you know, marketers are very clever like that. But as an adult, what I tend to find lately is they're marketing towards diet. So like, you mm. know, there's certain brands out there that are trying to, you know, get you to do a diet based on just eating their cereal yes which sounds a little bit like alarm bells for me yeah, i always think that's not a, not a balance really no, it's not anything you know any any diet that you're trying i don't advocate any fad diets it should always be about balance mm. never too much of anything never too little of anything so just eating cereal is not a great diet. not a great idea <laughs> sure you're going to lose some weight and you're going to put it back on so mm. there's no point in, in even attempting that and, it, and you've got to remember these are companies who are selling products to make money Mm. they're not really helping you you think they are you know there's much better way of doing it so if you go back to when you were a child and you had breakfast you know okay did you have breakfast this morning 
always have breakfast. I love always. breakfast. Yes. What did you have? I had porridge. Ah, yeah. There you go. Porridge. My I food. do. I love. I know it's hot here as well, so it's going to put a lot of people off. They go, I don't eat porridge because it's yeah. hot. But I know quite a lot. I've heard a lot about the benefits of porridge, and it is fantastic. It but is. There are loads of options. I mean, some just... people they think. I mean, first of all, for those people who don't maybe know what porridge is, mm. porridge is the reason I love it. It's completely organic it's one ingredient mm. oats if you look at the back of any of these fad cereals third ingredient is normally sugar yeah so you want to eat sugar and it's in the a morning. list of about 50 ingredients yeah. as well and if you can't pronounce them forget it yeah you know you need yeah. to be looking at a diet that's pronounceable words yeah ingredients that you understand and when you look at the back of a food label the first ingredient is what that product is made up of most so if yeah. it says sugar for the first ingredient you know that you've got a high good. percentage yeah. <laughs> you know yeah so when you look at the back of a porridge um pack one ingredient rolled oats mm. so the fantastic thing about porridge is it it's obviously carbohydrates which we should have in the morning and that will slowly release over the day if you go for um a simple carbohydrate so porridge is complex carbs that's mm. what we call that slowly releases energy a simple carbohydrate, which you can find in some of these sugary cereals, mm. make you feel full, that an hour or two later, you crash, you're looking for a cookie. You're hungry again. And I'm sure you can associate with this. Everyone's had this. They've they've filled up on something and then, I'm hungry. Yeah. So this hasn't really lasted you. It's not good enough for you. Mm. And it's because there's simple ingredients in it that are not great. So with porridge, you know, it's going to give you that slow release of energy, which means you're not going to look for other food you won't gain weight, yeah, which is quite nice. And, you know, this this goes back to the whole thing about diet. People are, okay, I have to cut calories from my diet. So I'm not hungry when I wake up. So why would I eat breakfast? There's no point, right? But there is because studies have proven that if you don't eat breakfast, you overcompensate later in the day. You hit the munchies harder. Absolutely. And what you don't realise is if you're overcompensating later, that's when you're not really going to burn those calories off you're going to gain weight. If you get your most calories in in the morning, it's going to take you through the day. I always think as well, like breakfast is a very diverse meal. Mm. And even if people if people who travel around the world as well, you'll know, yeah. you know, you, you go to different countries. I love to see what they've got on the breakfast table yeah. because it's always like, what? Like I went to Brazil, there was lots of cake. Oh, like, cake for breakfast? <laughs> what? Um, but I guess people think they'd rather concentrate on other meals of the day mm-hmm. where they could have more variety. Mm-hmm. But actually with breakfast, there's lots of options. There's Not, so you know. many, you know, there's so many options. And, you know, unfortunately there is that age old excuse of I don't have time. And, you know, it takes me maybe five to 10 maximum minutes mm. to make a bowl of pottage every morning. Mm. Um, you don't have to have pottage. You can have a yogurt. You know, that's a wonderful... Um, staple of getting in protein first thing in the morning you could have hard boiled eggs in your fridge like I do I pre-prepare them and then I can have a hard boiled egg with a piece of toast if you want there's not really an excuse you just have to find time and if it means getting up five minutes earlier it's five minutes it's not a major effort um but you know going back to people saying they're not hungry in the morning I would ask yourself, why? I mean, I sometimes wake in the night hungry. If you've eaten too much the day before, like especially the night before, when a lot of people overeat is nighttime, you're not going to be hungry when you wake up because you've still got all those calories. Yeah, it's still all sitting there waiting to to burn and to turn into something. So, you know, if you're listening to us and you're trying to lose weight, you really need to think about having breakfast. You know, have you ever heard the saying, um, you should eat breakfast like a king? And then lunch, like, I forget, what is it, a princess or something. And, and it, it basically is, you should eat a huge breakfast and mm. then scale it down during the day because you're not using those calories. And to go back to these studies that they found about people um, skipping breakfast, these people who skipped the breakfast underperformed in tests at their, at their jobs, memory tests. And even the people they tested on coffee alone still didn't do great because mm. you need food it's like a car needs fuel you need food so you know what you were saying about you have porridge every morning you you told me before you've tried these uh these oh so simple sachets right yes yeah dead simple these sachets are quite useful because mm-hmm. you can just rip off the top you've got your portion already yeah. ready for you mm-hmm. so you know you're not overeating yeah it or tells under-eating. you the, the number of calories and it's, uh, you know mm-hmm. exactly what's within that so if mm-hmm. you are watching your weight then it's it's useful but then you know, it's a case of just whizzing it around in the microwave. Yeah. That's a technical term. That's a cooking term, whizzing. <laughs> uh, whizzing it around and 
it's ready. Yeah. And that's it. Exactly. I mean, my, my method's a little, a little bit more effort, but it's it's literally the same thing. It's putting it in a pot with some milk. I put in some blueberries because it tastes really nice. And they're super some, good for you. Yeah. And I put in a little kick of cinnamon, good for your metabolism. And, you know, that's that's my sort of thing. But what I sometimes think about is, you know, if you're not sure what to have, people say to me, what's the best thing to eat in the morning? I'm saying, you know, porridge is for me. You obviously enjoy it too, Laura. But not it's not for everyone. So what you have to ask yourself is, well, what am I doing today? Do I need, like, what do I need? So like, for example, on the weekend, if I'm not that busy, I'll have a smoothie. I'll make a smoothie. You can even buy these if you don't yeah. want to make them. If I'm going to be busy, like lots of yoga classes, lots of clients, then sure, I'm, I'm going to go for, for the pottage option. And it can keep me going for like six hours. Like I don't feel hungry. So you've got to think, prepare yourself for that day ahead. And once you start to get in a habit of that, you will find it's quite easy to stick to. And I also think you find that it's easier to perhaps like, um, you know, get your children involved in eating breakfast and set great habits for them for the future because, you know, they're going to hit teenage years and maybe go, I don't need to eat breakfast yeah. anymore. Like yeah. mum doesn't eat it, dad doesn't eat it. Why do I have to do exactly. it? Exactly. And I don't know where most adults have, have fallen off of this mm. um, idea of eating breakfast. Probably life got in the way yeah. and working you became An extra busy. five minutes in bed became yeah. your priority. And, you know, what some people are guilty of is because they're rushing around you're not putting yourself first you know you're not giving yourself priority and reaching for these sort of cereal bars I certainly don't advocate it because they're full of sugar Mm. and again look at the ingredients and look at the calorie content some of them you could swap and have a huge breakfast you could have toast with scrambled eggs that's a wonderful breakfast full of protein with a carbohydrate in the toast you know you could think about what you like and try to enjoy that and Often what happens is you have a really good breakfast, you feel satisfied, you don't really need the the things that maybe are your vice. You should definitely make time for it. And, you know, to go back to those people who are trying to lose weight, they think, right, I'm going to skip breakfast, that's going to save me calories. But what actually happens is your body is in starvation mode. It thinks, right, there's no food coming, so I'm going to hold on to the fat that I have. We all have excess fat somewhere. So I'm going to hold on to it because I'll need it later Mm. so that's not a good thing if you actually wake up and you eat your body signals ah there's food here I need to process this I need to digest it and absorb these nutrients and that in itself burns calories so that process has kick-started your metabolism and we're going to talk about metabolism in another show I think maybe next week um because it's a really interesting tool that we all have and it's something to learn about and there's ways to improve your metabolism manipulate your metabolism yes. <laughs> cinnamon is a good one but there's lots of ways and really anyone any professional will tell you breakfast is certainly the way to do that okay well if you've got anyone listening wants to share what you have for breakfast you have easy tips or any great product just great ingredients let us know because we love to hear about it definitely any any chat about food is always welcomed (laughs) get in touch and uh, we'll see you next week thank you so much thank you so much for having me have a fantastic week you too